I'm John Proctor. I'm the CEO of Proctor Engineering Group, and today we're going to look at zoned air conditioning, and in particular, some of the mistakes that are commonly made when a zoned system is put in a house. So what I have as a demonstration is a small window air conditioner that's been converted into a package air conditioner. So it has a supply plenum on top and a return plenum on the bottom. There's a bypass between the return and the supply, which is traditionally put into these systems. And we have two zones. We have zone one and zone two. On each zone, there's a damper. So this is a damper open in zone one and closed in zone one. This is a damper open in zone two and closed in zone two. And this is a bypass damper closed and open. So we're going to do our measurements using a flow grid, which is measuring the airflow going into the unit and we're going to measure the flow pressure with this GG700 and that will convert to a flow as it always does on a flow grid. Then we're going to measure two temperatures. We're going to measure the return temperature which we have right here going into the unit and the supply temperature which we'll be able to get through this access hole here. And the last measurement we're going to make is the watt draw which we'll measure with this watt meter. So this is my ABLE assistant, Stephanie, and she's going to take down the numbers for us. And I'll start up the machine now. And what we're going to do is we're going to show different configurations of different zones calling and whether or not the bypass is open or closed. So we're going to start off with both of the zones calling for cooling and the bypass flopped open like we often find it. So in this configuration, we see a flow pressure of 4.5, a return temperature of 71, a supply temperature of 41, and a watt draw of 498. So what we're going to do now is we're going to close the bypass damper as it should be if it was working right. We're going to close the bypass damper, let it run for a while. The numbers in this configuration, the flow pressure is 10.1, the return temperature is 72, the Supply temperature is 42.6 and the watt draw is 512 watts. So now we'll change the configuration. You have only one zone calling for cooling. So we're going to close the other one. So now we have just this zone calling for cooling. And we're going to open the bypass damper because that's the normal method is when only one zone is calling the bypass damper opens. In this configuration the flow pressure is 2.7 the return temperature is 70, uh, 72 and the supply temperature is 40.2 and the watt draw is 491 watts. Now let's see what happens when we get rid of the stupid bypass. We're going to close the bypass here. In this configuration, our flow pressure is 7.8. Our return temperature is 70.2 our supply temperature is 42 and our watt draw is 500 watts deep. so now let's test the other zone so we're going to close this zone and open that zone 
And as it should happen uh, under typical circumstances is the bypass would now be open. So under this configuration, the flow pressure is 4.1. The return temperature is 72.4. The supply temperature is 39.4. And the watt draw is 497 watts. So let's get rid of that bypass damper again. Under this configuration, the flow pressure is 8.7. The return temperature is 72.6. The supply temperature is 41.2. And the watt draw is 508 watts. So now we're going to go ahead and calculate what the pressure means as far as flow and how many BTUs, uh, sensible BTUs we've delivered and what the EER is and what the savings are between closing the bypass and opening the bypass. So here's how we do the calculations. We take the calibration from the flow grid, which is 48 times the square root of the pressure. That gives us our CFM. We take the temperature differential between the supply and the return. So we have the return minus the supply. And then the sensible BTUs is equal to 1.08 times the temperature differential times the CFM. So going over here, we have a flow pressure of 4.5, and when we calculate, multiply that, the square root of that times 48, we come up with a CFM of 102 CFM, and our temperature differential is 71 minus 41, which is 30 degrees, times the CFM, times 1.08, comes up to 32.99. Next thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and calculate the EER. So we're going to take the 32.99 and divide it by 498. And that comes up to 6.62 is our EER. We'll do the rest of these calculations and see what we have. So more calculations. The EER, of course, is the sensible EER is the BTUs divided by the watts is equal to the sensible EER, which we have calculated right down here. And then the savings, so for example here, the savings will be the uh, biggest number, 9.10, okay? That's the one with the bypass damper closed, minus 6.62. Okay, that's the one with the bypass damper open, divided by 9.10. This tells you how much it saves you to close or totally get rid of that bypass damper. 27% savings. Okay, let's look at it when we're talking about where the bypass dampers are actually meant to be open. Okay, so here we have one zone calling. We have a bypass damper open and a bypass damper closed. So look at what's happening. A lot of the airflow is going around in a loop instead of going in and out of the machine. When we close the bypass damper, then we get the flow through the machine, which means that we get the efficiency that we're looking for. So we got 5.52 and 8.17. So I take 8.17 minus 5.52, and I divide that by 8.17, and 
and I get a 32% savings by getting rid of the bypass damper. So now we're going to do it with the other zone. And the other zone goes through the same thing. You get more airflow that goes all the way from the room, through the machine, and out into the room instead of going in a circle. Okay, and our efficiency went from 7.42 to 9.45, and that is a savings of 22%. So I hope I've convinced you that a bypass is dumb. Thank you.